happy crafters. Oh my goodness, do I have a video jam packed with fun and easy DIY projects for you. I've compiled 10 very simple and easy DIY projects for you to add to your decor this spring and summer. So let's get started. It all just goes away. Things are planned to say. Oh baby. All right, so I am gonna show you how to make a bee bath. You might be wondering what a bee bath is, but a bee bath is like a bird bath, but it's made for bees. So I had these terracotta planters and I decided that I wanted to use them to make a bee bath. So first I took my chalk paint and I painted a larger terracotta planter with the white chalk paint. Now this is just folk art chalk paint. It isn't anything fancy. Then I also found two saucers that are going to make the bath portion of this project. And I painted both sides of those saucers with the white chalk paint. And you don't have to have brand new terracotta planters to make this bee bath. Oh no, you can use used ones and you don't even have to paint it if you don't want to. I just wanted to paint mine white because I thought it would stand out really nice and it would be a pretty accent in my garden. And once I had all of the terracotta pieces painted, say that three times fast, I decided I wanted to add some bee-like embellishments to the terracotta planter. So I found some really cool bee photos online and I just printed them out and then I cut out each of the individual pieces that I'm going to be attaching to my bee bath. And I really like this bee. This bee is going to be the main focal point on my bee bath. And once my planter had dried, then I just gave a coat of Mod Podge and then I attached each of those pictures that I had cut out. By putting the Mod Podge on first, it gives something for this paper to stick to. And then I just secured each picture in place with another coat of Mod Podge. I did this all the way around the planter. And once I was finished attaching all of the pictures, then I did a thicker coat of Mod Podge to completely seal this planter. And while that was drying, I used some E6000 to secure each of the saucers to the planter. Now I used the smaller saucer first and I placed that right side up onto the terracotta planter And then I took the larger saucer and I attached the bottom to the smaller saucer. Now this is what is going to be the bath of the bee bath. And once it was dry, this is what it looked like. Now, since I'm going to be using this outside, I wanted to give it a really good sealer. And I'm going to be putting water in that top portion of my bee bath, so I wanted to make sure all of that paint and everything was secure and it's not going to get into the water for the bees. Next, I took these flat marbles, which you can get something similar at Dollar Tree, and I just put a bunch of these little glass flat marbles or pebbles into the top saucer. And then I can fill this up with water and the little marbles will help the bees or any of the pollinators that come to get a drink be able to actually reach the water without falling in. Isn't this so cute? Oh my gosh, I love this idea and I think it will look great in my garden.
All right, this project is so easy. So I found these carpet pieces or rugs at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 and I got three of them. And I wanted to create a larger rug to lay on my front porch so that I can put my pretty rug on top. So I took three of these rug pieces and I flipped them over and I connected them together. So I took two pieces and using my hot glue gun on the high temperature setting, I hot glued the rugs together. I know this sounds silly, but it really does work. So just by putting the hot glue down the seams and then using a craft stick to really work that into the seams, then I pushed the rugs together and allowed it to dry. And I did use a lot of glue for this project because I really want to make sure that all three of these rug pieces are going to really blend together and look like one rug. And once I had the first two pieces together, then I took the third section and I just repeated the process using my glue gun on the high temperature setting. And then I just put the glue on and then using the craft stick, I just pushed it down into the seam. So this will help to keep both of those pieces of the rug together. Now, once I was done with that, I took some Gorilla Tape. This stuff is so strong and I just reinforced it over top of each of the seams. This may be strong enough to work on its own, but I really didn't want to chance it and I have a hot glue gun. So that's why I decided to do the hot glue first because that's going to melt those plastic fibers together. And then this will actually give a little bit of something extra to give it some more strength. And once I had the tape going down the seams, then I also reinforced it kind of going across as well. And that is pretty much it. There is my rug and it looks like it is all one piece. And my dog Tater had to try it out and see what she thought of it. That is not too bad for a Dollar Tree rug. Now I can put my decorative mat on top of the rug that I made and it gives a little bit of definition to the rug and it will also protect it from the elements a little bit better. Oh, this is such a fun project. Now I found this printable from Mother Time and I will leave a link in the description box below. She has so many incredible printables. All I did was print off this plaid pattern and then I had this really nice frame that I got from Goodwill. It was originally an Ikea frame and all I had to do was put that beautiful print into the frame. And I wanted to make sure it would stay in place, so I used a little bit of scotch tape and just taped it to the matting that was included in this frame. And then I just put the back back onto the frame itself. And my work of art is done. That is so simple yet so pretty. And I really like the way that this looks with the rest of the decor pieces that I made. Now I have this Easter basket that I got from the Dollar Tree and it's just a yellow plastic Easter basket, but I thought this would make a really nice planter. So I removed the handle and then I painted it with some gray chalk paint. And then I just took a container and put some Mod Podge into it. and added a little bit of water and then mixed everything really well. I'm basically making a paper mache. And you may be wondering what the paper part of my paper mache is and it's going to be toilet paper. This is a very affordable way to make some paper mache. And I want to make this planter look more like 
a high-end planter like Pottery Barn or something with a lot of texture and I thought the toilet paper would definitely give it some texture. So I just took folded pieces of toilet paper and I put it all the way around the basket. And while I was putting those pieces on, some of the toilet paper was actually not wet with the paper mache mixture that I made. So I just used a small paintbrush and painted on more of the Mod Podge water concoction that I had made. And I have to say the toilet paper does really give it a nice texture. I not only did it on the outside of the basket, but I also continued the process on the inside of the basket as well. And once I got down to the bottom of the inside of my basket, now turned into a planter, I just painted on the rest of the Mod Podge concoction that I had made. Then I did paint everything with a thick coat of gray chalk paint. And you can really see the texture. Isn't that so awesome? I love how that looks. And it doesn't look like toilet paper, does it? Next I took some white chalk paint and I lightly brushed that over top of all of the gray on the outside of this planter. I want to be able to see the different variations of the gray and the white and the darker colors. So I really just want that white to act as an accent to my planter. This is such a fun and easy way to create something that looks high end that really isn't. And then I took four wood beads and I lightly painted them white with that chalk paint. And then using some Dollar Tree wood glue, I secured those four beads onto the bottom of the planter because these are going to be the feet. And there is my high-end Dollar Tree planter. I think it looks great. All I have to do is put in some pretty greenery and I found these fern fronds or fern bunches at Goodwill for $3.99. One was $21.99 and one was $24.99 at Hobby Lobby. Hmm, different prices on the same item from Hobby Lobby, go figure. And that is it, here is my adorable planter. Now when I put it outside, it was really windy. So I did put a brick into the planter to give it some weight. You can see the leaves are kind of blowing around on my plant, but the planter stayed in place and I didn't need to add anything extra. Now on my last shopping trip to Dollar Tree, I got these pretty napkins and I have a lot of these terracotta tiles and I didn't know what I was gonna do with them. So I decided to make something with them. So I'm going to make some drink coasters using these napkins. And I thought the watermelon ones are perfect for summertime. So all I did was take some Mod Podge and paint that onto the terracotta tile Next, I just secured the napkin in place. Now on this first one, I didn't go all the way to the edge, but that's okay, I can fix that later. Then I flipped over the tile and secured the remaining portion of the napkin to the back. Now there are many layers of this napkin, so I did use some Mod Podge in between those layers. Or if you wanted to, you could just peel off the top layer of the napkin. By giving it a nice thick heavy coat of the Mod Podge, that will help keep this napkin in place. And the Mod Podge acts like a sealer too, so it will protect it if there are drinks put onto it, which is my intention.
Next, I flipped over the tile and I gave a nice thick coat of the Mod Podge to the top of the tile and I also made sure to cover all of the sides. And there's no right or wrong way of how to do this. I did many different ways of the napkin to get different designs of the watermelon onto the different tiles. And while my coasters were drying, I decided I have a lot of napkins, so I'm going to make like a serving platter that looks like a watermelon. And the napkin, when it's unfolded, it's round, just like this wood round. So I painted on some Mod Podge, then I took my unfolded napkin and smoothed it out on top of this wood round. Then I took more Mod Podge and I gave a nice thick heavy coat to the top of the napkin as well. And once the Mod Podge had dried, then I took some green acrylic paint and I painted all four sides of the tile. So just the little sides, not the top or the bottom. I wanted this to look like a watermelon rind. Then I repeated the process on the wood round. So what I did was take that green acrylic paint and I painted all the way around the plain edge of the wood round. Now I did make sure to cover the edge of the napkin, but this will take two coats of paint. So I'm not going all the way to the darker green on the napkin. Once it dried, I came back with a chip style brush and I really like that edge because it kind of ties that green into the lighter green of the watermelon, which really makes this look like it was meant to be like this, not like I did a little quick DIY. Next, I took this Crafter Square cork and it's adhesive, it has an adhesive on the bottom. So I took my watermelon coasters and I just put a couple of lines onto the backing of the cork. Then I cut it out so that the cork is going to go on the bottom of my coasters and that will help make it so they're not going to slide around. So I cut squares a little bit smaller than the terracotta tile itself. Then I removed the backing and I stuck that to the bottom of my coaster. Look at that, isn't that fancy? And because I want to be able to use these outside, I did take all of these pieces out into my garage and I sealed it with a clear matte finish spray. First I did the platter and then I did my coasters. Now I made sure to get the top and all four sides of the coasters to protect the paint job. Then I thought it would be nice to add a bottom to my platter. So I had this charger that I got from Dollar Tree and this is going to fit perfectly. So I just took some hot glue and put that all the way around the edge of the charger plate. And then I took the wood round and secured that to the charger. And just like that, I've created a really fun project for the summer. I think these turned out beautiful and I love how they look. Now this is another fun and easy project. I found this sign at the Dollar Tree and I really liked it, but I really liked it for what I'm going to be using it for. So I took some white chalk paint and I covered up everything on the printed portion of the sign. So I'm going to leave that burlap alone, but I do want to cover up everything else. So the carrot, the truck, everything is getting covered up. All of the letters, everything.
And once it was dry, this is what it looked like. And I have another printable from Mother Time. I love her printables, they're so pretty. So I just cut this down to size using a little cutter because I want this to fit onto that sign. And I found that using a cutter like this gives me nice straight lines. Yep, that is the size that I want it to be. So I took some Mod Podge and I just coated the white surface of the sign. And then I carefully took my print and put it in place onto my sign. Then I just kind of smoothed everything out to make sure there's no wrinkles. And I used a little more Mod Podge to seal the entire print. And it looks really nice and I could use it to hang up, but I wanted it to sit on a shelf. So I took a scrap piece of wood and I just secured that to the bottom back of the sign. And there is my finished project. Isn't that pretty? I'm telling you, you've got to check out Mother Time's website and all of her printables that she has because they are so pretty. Now I want to make a flower box and this is something from Hobby Lobby. It was $14.99, but I didn't pay that. No, oh, no, I found this at the Goodwill and I only paid $5.99 for it. Now I really like this piece because it says grateful so I can use this side for Thanksgiving or I can flip it around and use the plain side which is what I'm going to be doing. So I took three pieces of the rectangular floral foam from Dollar Tree and I fit them into the planter box. The third one was a little too long, so I just cut it down to size, which is very easy to do with this floral foam. And next I did add a little bit of hot glue to each of the foam pieces before I put them into the box. I want this foam to stay in place so that was why I added the hot glue. And then I found these really pretty floral bunches on Amazon. They were really affordable. Like everything, I will leave links in the description box if you would like to do something like this for yourself. But I think this was like 24 bundles of this grass and flowers and this is perfect for springtime. So I did cut them down two notches on each stem using my handy dandy husky nipping tools, which are super strong. And then I just took each of those bunches and put them into the center of the floral foam all the way down the length of the planter. And for the two full pieces of the foam, I did use five of those floral stems. And when I got down to the final one, I did use four stems. So 14 stems total to make this look nice and full. Now I don't want it to be plain like that. So I did take some other floral pieces that I had and I just cut individual stems off and then placed those in the front of the grass and flowers. I like the simplicity of the green and with the purple flowers, it's just very striking and very pretty and very spring. That little extra greenery in the front really does make a difference. Yeah. 
and here it is sitting in my living room. I love how this turned out. I know I say that with all of my projects, but I really do love how it turned out. Now I found this basket at Goodwill for $2.99 and I've always wanted to make something like this, a basket of flowers to hang on my front door. So I have lots of extra greenery, like this greenery right here is leftovers. When I made some horse head Christmas wreaths, I have lots of these left. And I'm very grateful that I have them because this is perfect for this project. So I just cut that greenery down to size so it would fit into my basket. and then I just started adding random floral pieces. Now I have these asparagus type ferns. They are silk, obviously, and I put three of those into the basket. And then I had all of these paper type flowers. So I thought about putting them in big bunches, but then decided against it. And I cut them into single stems so I could spread them out throughout the basket. And if you have gotten this far into my video, thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Just click that subscribe button and click the bell notification. That way you'll get an alert every time I have a new video coming out. And I also had these pink paper type flowers. Now I did get all of these from Hobby Lobby. So I cut those down to smaller, more manageable bunches. And then I just randomly placed them into the basket. And then I had these pink stems. Again, these came from Hobby Lobby as well. And I got all of these when they were 50% off on their floral because that is the only way that I will buy florals from Hobby Lobby is when they are on sale. Pretty much anything I'll buy at Hobby Lobby when it's on sale. And I just filled the empty spaces with the rest of those flowers. And these are just remnants from the 98 cent floral picks that you can find at Walmart. So I cut individual stems off and I added those in as well. And I think that is about it. I really like just the pink flowers. I didn't want to add too much more and it looks really pretty, but I also had this welcome sign and how appropriate to have on a front door. So all I had to do was twist that wire onto the basket and now I have a welcome wreath or basket wreath. Now I did decide to lift up that welcome so it was more in the center, but here are the flowers hanging on my front door. Now this is a really fun and easy project. This is a charger from the Dollar Tree. I love these things and a Dollar Tree self sticking tile. Now the self sticking tile, it has the sticker portion is on the back. If you cut this down to the size you need it to be, that sticker will come off. So it is very, very sticky, but this tile is the perfect size for this tray. This is going to be the bottom of my tray. So I did attach the sticky portion for a moment because I just wanted to size this so that the tile will fit on the bottom of the tray. And then I just cut the tile down to the size that I needed it to be and I did remove that sticky backing.
and I did remove the sticky backing before I secured the tile to the bottom of the tray. Next I took some Dollar Tree wood glue and I put that all along the bottom portion of the tray. This is what that tile is going to stick to. And I find that the wood glue works better for projects like this with this tile rather than using hot glue because if you use hot glue it's going to melt your plastic tile. I also took the wood glue and I just put a bead of it all the way around the edges of the tile so that it's going to be seamless and tie into my tray. And once that was dry, I took this antique parchment acrylic paint from Apple Barrel and I literally just poured some out into the bottom of the tray and then just painted it onto the tile and the tray. I probably shouldn't have poured it in here, but this was just the right amount to use for the tray. I do want to see a little bit of those colors come through underneath because I want this to look more rustic and more farmhouse old old timey vintage I guess. So using a chip brush I just kind of brushed that paint all the way around the inside of the tray and then I also lightly brushed it on the outside because again I want this to look old and rustic I don't want it to look brand new. And while that was drying, I was making some jars to go onto my tray. And you can find mason jars like this at the Dollar Tree or just anywhere really. And then I took some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. This is wire edged ribbon. And I cut three pieces which were pretty much the same size. Next, I took the ribbon and I secured that to the center of the mason jar. And I repeated this process on all three of the jars. I only put a little bit of glue at the back because I don't want to see that glue on the front because I don't want the glue to bleed through and show on the front of my little mason jar planter. And once I had the burlap portion of it done, I did want to add one more ribbon to the front. So I have this chiffon ribbon that I found on Amazon, but it was a little bit wide, so I cut the ribbon in half. Then I used a little bit of hot glue, again only on a small section of the ribbon, which will go onto the back of the mason jar. Then I just brought the ribbon around to the front and just tied a square knot. And I cut the tails off so that they won't be hanging down past the edge of the jar. And I repeated that process with all three of the jars. Then I just put the lids back on without the centers.
and now they're ready for flowers. My tray is dry. Now I can put my mason jar planters onto the tray. And then fill each of the jars with some flowers. Here are the flowers that I chose, just daisies. And I think they look like pretty little wildflowers. And here they are on my dining room table. And I really think this looks nice. It was an easy project to do. And it's light, fun, and spring-like. So what did you think of those 10 DIY projects? Really easy to do. You can do these in a weekend. I know you can because I did. Which one was your favorite? And which crafts are you going to make? Crafting doesn't have to be expensive. You can find things at Dollar Tree, at thrift stores, and repurpose things that you already have to make some new decor for your home this spring and summer. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.